Let's look now at editing schematics and editing our wires and our components and so on. The first two commands that you will need on a regular basis will be scoot and move. So let's have a look at how they work. What we're going to do, there's our schematic editing there. We haven't got any drawings available at the moment, but if I go to open and go and look for some drawings, we're in section nine now, so I'll go up a few levels there. And as you can see, editing schematics is there into the drawings folder and there's the drawings that I need. Now you'll notice these drawings all have gen in front of them. They are general drawings. So the JIC or the IEC standards don't really apply because you would use these commands generally regardless of which standard you were using. So there's scoot and move. So I'll add that, click on open. That opens up the drawing. As you can see, the drawing's there ready to go. But what I need to do is just go to the project, right click and add the active drawing and apply the default values like we normally do. You'll see there that that is sheet 001 and it's gen scoot and move .dwg. So let's have a look at scoot and move. I'm going to just pan a little bit here and zoom in. Now you'll see I've got a relay switch here all on its own. RAM04 doing nothing. Really it should be over here on this smart line here that represents that wire there. What I need to do is move it. Now ordinarily you might think that you go to the home tab on the ribbon and I'll use the move command. Prompts me to select objects. Now my dynamic, for some strange reason, isn't on. It should be. There we go, just to make sure that we can see the select objects prompt. I'll select the objects, which are an AutoCAD block. I'll right click and pick a base point. I'll put object snaps on and I'll go for that endpoint snap there. Now if I move that across to there and then snap to the midpoint of that line there, you'll notice nothing happens. It doesn't trim the line. It's just a block sitting on top of a line. Let's undo that. If I'm going to move a component in a schematic using AutoCAD Electrical, what I would do is use the move component command. That way, the drawing updates, the project updates, the database updates. So if I select that component and then just right click, I get that lovely flashlight thing, remember? Where you've got all the options available to you. There's move component. Move component is also available on the schematic tab on the ribbon. I'll show you in a moment. And now when I move it this time, I can drag. If I just place that in, I'll line it in by eye as best I can for now rather than worry about snapping. What I could do though, think about it, if I've got snap and grids, maybe if they're lined up on the grid, not really. As you can see, the snap and grid aren't really lined up. So what I would probably do is just place that freehand for now. But as soon as I do, it recognizes that it's gone into a wire. Did you see it zoom extents and then zoom back in again? That's because it's updating the drawing, the project, and the database. So that is now in the right place. As you can see, it's trimmed the smart line, the wire back. It's where it should be, and it's done how it should be. So make sure that you don't use that move command. You need to use component move, which is here on the schematic here. If you go to edit, and you'll see there, I've got the option of moving circuits and so on. If I go to components, I've also got the option there of saving. I can edit. There's all these tools here that I should be using. So make sure that you use the right one. If I click on scoot there, which we're going to look at in a moment, there's the move component command that we used a minute ago. But you can see that you can save circuits, move circuits, edit components, move components. In this particular instance, now we're going to look at scoot. I'll pan up a little bit now. And as you can see, I've got a wire coming off of this terminal number one going to number two there, and it's just cranked for no reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to scoot here. Now what I can do, if I select that line there and right click, I can also use scoot on the right hand shortcut menu as well. So if I click there, I can scoot that up and line it in if I want to. If I put snap and grid on, and line that in. Will it line in? No, because the snap and the grid aren't exactly aligned. So I won't do it that way. What I could do is maybe use object snaps and line across, but that doesn't work either. Object snaps don't have anything to do with scoot at all. So I'll line it in, or if I just drag it up to say there, just freehand, it'll update that way. And I press enter to finish. Now, if I use scoot here, again, same process, select the component I want to scoot and I might drag it quite a long way down and see what happens. If I go to there, you'll see, look, it brings that all the way down. Now, if I click on this one though, or maybe this one and scoot this one, watch what happens. 
the whole thing moves. So if I line that into there, you'll notice it all lines up apart from that freehand bit that I had at the end. But I could potentially, if I really zoom in tight here, I might be able to tidy that up. So if I click there and scoot that a little bit more, I'm close. But really what you would do, you'd do that a lot more accurately. I'll just press enter to finish and you can see how those have scooted down. But not only has it taken the wire with it, but because I've used that scoot command, it's moved all of the components, the terminals as well. So that's scoot and move. Use them to your advantage. They make your life a lot easier when you're editing your schematic drawings in AutoCAD Electrical.